Or watch this one. It's a 30 minute video. I know. I know. It's kind of long. But like, I won't pause it. We'll, we'll just let it go. It's kind of long though. But I like, oh, I, I, this will give a good break. So I'll be able to commentate on some music. If the video loads. Jeff the Killer. Lost Are you a Jeff media. Killer stan? It is something that continues to entice us for so many different reasons. The backrooms the intro. The intrigue doesn't lie in the media itself or the timeline of its discovery, but rather how it was discovered. Every now and then, a piece of lost media will be found in an incredibly bizarre or coincidental way. These are the it ones was revealed that to me in, in a dream. Head, and today we'll be going through them. For this video, I won't be covering those that I've already made many documentaries on, such as Clockman or Cracks. <laughs> but anyways, let's take a look at pieces of lost media that were found It's lost media that was found in, in strange, strange ways. ways. Conflict, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Rarely would somebody expect to hear that an episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was pulled from syndication because of violent and disturbing topics. But While y'all watch this, I'm gonna happened. read Peak Fiction. Give no, me a sort second. Of. In November of 1983, a five-arc episode <laughs> of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood aired titled What? Mr. Mr. Rogers, Rogers has fucking like conflict. anime arcs? What the fuck? This episode was made in direct response like, single to the ABC things. telefilm titled the day after, a film that featured graphic nuclear war imagery. Bruh, wait, that's not the film I was thinking about, but there was Come a on, film John, that scared the shit out of me, bro. In this evening's ABC theater presentation Fuck, of The Day it? After, I play a father in a typical American family who experienced the catastrophic events of a full-scale nuclear war. Fuck, what's it called? Before the movie begins, we would like to caution parents about the graphic depiction of nuclear explosions and their devastating effects. The emotional impact of these scenes may be unusually disturbing and we are therefore recommending that very young children not be permitted to I don't watch. know bro I watched a scene from like a, a fucking movie it and starts it off like any me. normal episode of Mr. Rogers would but things get a little strange when we visit the neighborhood of make-believe King Friday becomes suspicious of all the parts that I are feel like the Spongebob boss clips aren't clear and sends are, are over real. to investigate meanwhile we cut the prince Tuesday at school where they're learning about war most kids real? are horrified while Prince Tuesday seems kind of film? into the Serbian? idea of it. Upon going home, he finds his father, the king, looking over the parts they intercepted from the factory, believing it to be a bomb. And South would ever had a war. I don't know what the fuck. They did I don't. I never watched long, long uh, ago, this because, have. like, I think I was and they know too how. Yes, young, I guess they or like know I came how. after it. To build bombs and make bullets and make all kinds of bad stuff to hurt people. Oh, Tuesday! I don't think a little part like this could ever be a part of a bomb or never anything like that. Never know. That's right. Uh, this could be the part of a bomb. What the the second episode continues the story. With the king continuing to spiral into paranoia <laughs> over the Did fact that this nuked? might be a bomb. Eventually, the king jumps to conclusions and assumes that Southwood is over there making a million bombs. So then the king starts wanting to make their own bombs. Nice. Those who want this neighborhood to be protected? If Southwood is building bombs, we must do the same. <laughs> Why? Well, uh, because uh, it's just the thing to do. But Uncle Friday, we don't even know the people of Southwood. We know that they might. True, they bombs. could be making bombs. After this you episode, never know. things escalate, and lessons about air raids and gas masks are taught. Nice. But in the end, everything is shown to be blown out of proportion, as Southwood was really just making a bridge. Oh, the issue nice. is completely resolved. King Friday takes all the bomb parts and turns them into a record player for the school, and Mr. Rogers concludes the arc. But he still has the bombs that he made. Rules are very, he? very important, not just for games, but for all things, even big things like countries. Countries have to have rules to protect people, too. And someday, huh. you'll be helping to make the rules for your country. I trust that you'll make the best kind you know how. The episodes were removed from rotation on April 5th, 1996. Why? That sounds like a big talks of war in the media. The episodes remain lost until May 20th, 2017, when, out of nowhere... The first two episodes were uploaded to the YouTube channel, Trog Sleep Now. 
Bro, there's so much lost media that then people just have in their basements, probably. Later, the entire five-episode arc was uploaded to a private torrent tracker called MySpleen by a user named Snowpack. Since then, the entire arc was restored by Lost Media Wiki user YoshiKiller2S and uploaded to MySpleen and the Internet Archive, which fixed many audio and saturation issues. And it's funny, because like, most of this Lost Media shit is shit that like, I would never so watch otherwise. So what makes this so interesting? Which is so fucking cool. Well, for starters... No one knows anything about the Trog yeah, Sweep saw Now the channel. The channel is actually still around to this day. They never uploaded any other videos, and they've since deleted the Mr. Rogers episodes. It's they as just if the channel existed deed. for the sole reason of uploading them. That probably is what they made it for. The timing is also strange. I mean, why now after all these years? Well, one theory is linked to former President Donald Trump. Okay. And Makes slashing sense. of public broadcasting in favor for more military spending. I'm not down bad. What? Releasing a lost episode that speaks specifically about the dangers of war seems apt. Almost like a warning of things to come. I guess it makes sense. It's possible this is all just a coincidence, but the timing seems a little too convenient. Nevertheless, it's a win for lost media restoration and remains a personal favorite of mine. This music got me scared that someone's going to walk in my door. Ain't this guy dead? I think so. Metropolis. Metropolis? The whole city? It was found? Metropolis is a film that is oh. no stranger to any film major. This 1927 German expressionist film oh, wait, is no, I've one, heard of, this one of the pioneers of the science fiction genre and is among the first feature-length film in said genre. The original film at the time of its release was met with a mixed reception. Bro, it was applauded so for its groundbreaking films. special effects, but was criticized for its story having an alleged communist message. It was also criticized for its incredibly long runtime. The original German version clocked in at about 153 minutes. Which, so to appeal honestly, to a more international audience, it was cut down from two and a half hours to an hour and a half, with many plot-relevant scenes getting chopped, along with several important characters. The film, as a result, became something of a mystery for those who saw it after the cuts were made, as it was pretty hard to tell what the plot was actually supposed to be about without these important scenes and characters. Unfortunately, upon being cut from its original length, many of the deleted scenes were lost to time, never to be seen again. Or so we thought. I watched this movie. Bruh, it's sad. Almost it was like a lost Spider-Man fan film. Almost a later in 2008, film. a film collector in Argentina oh, revealed reminds that me. they had a copy of the original 100. I'm making a video year. for the anime channel. Uh, I started thinking about it yesterday. I'm going to make a video about lost anime media. Like, there's Doraemon, like, the original Doraemon episodes. There's, um, the obviously the JoJo's Phantom Blood movie. Like, there's version shit like of the that. film. It's gonna be cool. It's Although, gonna be cool. it was heavily damaged. It turns out that this film collector had been loaning his copy this of guy. the film to theaters for years this entire time. And Argentinians have been watching the original cut of the film unknowingly. <laughs> Argentinians just... There was talk going around that the employees had to wait two and a half hours for the film to finish. And now it makes sense why. The copy of the film was badly damaged thanks to it being printed on 16mm positive stock, while the original negatives were on 35mm film. Mm. Due to the amount of damage involved, restoring the film became one of the biggest film restoration attempts in history. Two years later in 2010, Kino Films and the F.W. Murnau Foundation showed off the 99% complete restoration and released it on DVD as The Complete Metropolis. Nice. However, it remains at 99% complete, as, unfortunately, there are two scenes that are far too damaged to be restored. Those being a scene of a monk preaching in a chapel, and another scene of a fight between the characters Raw Wang and Frederson. Damn. So, what makes it interesting? It still remains unknown exactly how or why the original German film ended up in Argentina, and remained so hidden for all these years. The uh -huh. copy was made at some point in the 1960s or 70s, but how or why still remains a mystery. Perhaps well, maybe someday we'll learn it. why, and but for now we can celebrate the return of the birth of sci-fi, and one of the greatest films ever made. Doctor oh, Who. I, yeah, there's like a fuck ton of Doctor, Doctor Who episodes that are gone, huh? Doctor Who is infamous for being a series that has a ton of missing episodes. Despite being a massive media franchise, 
to this day, there are still episodes that remain missing. In fact, most of the BBC's programming from the 1930s mm. to the 1970s remains oh. lost to this day, thanks to junking, which was when old videotapes and film recordings yeah, they got were destroyed over. in order to make room for new media recorded on new formats. Such a shame. Unfortunately, due to these practices, um, ruffles are good. Already eating them. Hot Cheetos are good, obviously. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of good. Ninety-seven chips up there. episodes of the original series remain lost to this day. The only thing that remains for many of these episodes are single stills or audio tracks. Or audio, yeah. Most of these lost episodes were during the run of the second Doctor, with a handful of the first Doctor episodes missing as well. However, the number of yeah, lost episodes sense. was originally much larger, and a few have been found here and there in the strangest ways. While video recording at the time was in its infancy, it was still being done. A few episodes were first discovered in Devon, England, when a 12-year-old boy at the time had meticulously recorded some of the early episodes in nice. his bedroom, not even allowing his mother inside so he can get the cleanest audio. Nice. What a real one. The next set of episodes were found in Nigeria. During the 60s and 70s, the BBC sold many episodes of Doctor Who to overseas stations for broadcast. These stations would often destroy their own copies as well. So it's really a miracle that any survived, especially since they were found in Nigeria, whereas their original destination for delivery was actually Hong Kong. Oh. It's unknown how these episodes they intercepted made their way the to Nigeria, tapes and took them. but good thing they did, or else they might have been lost forever. Some other lost episodes were found in an abandoned BBC building in Villiers House, Ealing. Hold on. After the. Oh, you can't. I was just wondering because I was like, these are all VHSs. How do you convert it to digital? But there's obviously a way. Company had left the building. One employee decided to double check once more to make sure Twilight everything Zone was taken out, writer. and found nice. two episode recordings left behind in a forgotten back room. If that wasn't weird enough. A few episodes were even found randomly in the basements of a church in London. Now, the mystery behind why these episodes ritual. were found in this church basement is perhaps the most episodes. intriguing bit surrounding Doctor Who Lost Media. There were rumors that this church was once a building previously owned by the BBC, and that's why the episodes were found there. However, the Doctor Who fan site, Broad WCast, I believe, delved deep into this mystery in order to find the truth behind it all. Early reports and news stories 18. never made mention of the church building being formerly owned by the BBC. That's an aspect that's introduced much later in the narrative. While many news stories reported different facts, almost in a game of telephone to see which parts got distorted, almost all of them stated that the church was once a Mormon church located in London. Okay. It's believed that these episodes, alongside an episode of a different series titled Warship, were being sent to the Australian Broadcasting Commission, or the ABC. They were most likely found in the Mormon church basements, but it's believed it was never truly a BBC building at any point in time. The church was built in 1978, and the episodes were found in 1983, so they would have had to be placed there during a very small window of time. Other details became murkier and murkier, such as who was it that found the episodes? What else was in the film canisters? How did the canisters get there? All of this could have been prevented had the BBC just had the foresight to see just how big and important Doctor Who would be one day, and simply not destroy their episodes. But at least it makes for an interesting topic. Fuck it, I'm gonna start posting videos and deleting them all. Just so it's lost media. SCP-173 And I always move it when I buy new ones, because I Up do until now, we've order. mostly covered films, Episodes of TV shows and other various forms of lost. I have another shelf right here that. But I don't think I've ever covered a lost 4chan post. Well, here we are. 4chan. This lost 4chan post oh, was God. about SCP-173, which would eventually lead to the incredibly popular SCP Foundation. For reference, the SCP Foundation is a fictional organization all about containing and documenting various entities, individuals, locations, and objects that violate the natural law and order of space, time, and physics that we know of. What the fuck? I didn't know Despite this. Despite the foundation growing and thriving, the original post became lost for over a decade. The 
The original post was posted on the 4chan's X board on June 22, 2007. It just seems like another level of degeneracy. The post described right procedures for. needed to safely contain a paranormal statue that could move and attack people when it's not being looked at. Oh, that's that fucking awesome. Similar to a certain episode of Doctor Who. Well, that's because it is. On June 9, 2007, a few days before the 4chan post, an episode of Doctor Who titled Blink aired. Uh, which introduced the creatures known as the Weeping Angels. The Weeping Angels are living statues that can attack when they're not I never watched Doctor at, Who. Hence the title of the episode being Blink. The concept of these creatures is incredibly similar to the ones being described in SCP-173, and the original post dates line up with the airing of the episode you thought in SCP June of 2007. Real? This looks real? This is something that members of the Foundation have argued about for years with some members saying the post was before the Doctor Who episode, despite there being no proof to back that up. Due to the nature of the website, 4chan does not archive any of its threads. Really? And after a few days, they are deleted. What do you mean the nature so that of the threads website? can take their place. Unless they're externally archived or have screenshots taken of them, most of these threads end up being lost to time. Due to its significance Wait, I'm in the Wait, I'm confused. Now I'm curious about that. Huh. What, just because everyone's there fucking, is fucking weird? So, like, less of a trail? Huh. Mm, so, I guess it saves space, but, like, it's, it's, 4chan's pretty big, right? Because, like, Reddit can do it. So, I know 4chan's probably not as big, right? But, huh. What the fuck? Foundation and its fandom, many searched high and low for anything that remained of the it's original cool. threads for years, scouring several archives really? such as Yatsuba Society, Chan Archive, and many X thread dumps in the Internet Archive, but to no success. However, everything changed on October 8th, 2018, as it turns out that Jason Scott of the Internet Archive just so happened to have an archive of a whopping 10 million threads from 4chan. What the fuck? Just sitting around for some reason. He uploaded them onto the Internet Archive, and no, then the that's user known as Das Meme steeped through and found the original was SCP-173 one guy that did it? post like, I'm saving and uploaded every it to the like... SCP Foundation subreddit, ending a decade-long search for the post that started it all. Thank God Scott had these posts, but yeah, but like why? Why did he have them in the first place? It's it's and weird. why did he sit on them for so long? We'll probably never know, but at least for now, this mystery is solved. Oh, man. I'm fucking tired. Wake and fright. Moments before destruction? This Australian-American film from 1971 Ow. was a thriller SCP based game? on the 1961 novel of the same name cool. by Kenneth Cook. The film received favorable reviews, but was an absolute financial bomb in both Australia and America, partially due to poor marketing but mostly due to some incredibly distasteful content. Distasteful? In the what film, there's a scene where multiple kangaroos are shot to death oh, in a cruel nice. manner. That's, this uh, footage was taken during a real kangaroo hunting hole, where the hunters hired for the scene were said to be heavily intoxicated. Which oh, wait, were they actually the killed? And disturbing way they killed the kangaroos. Oh, this shit. This disturbed the film crew so much that they orchestrated a fake power outage as an excuse to wrap up filming for the day. The film also had additional controversy in What's Australia. What's the film called? Wait. Oh, oh God. Wake in fright. Kangaroo. Wait, is it real? Real kangaroos? Uh, is the wake in fright kangaroo scene real? An actual yeah. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. What the fuck? I kind of want to watch it now. Like, it might make me sound cold-hearted, but I'm just curious. Due to its depiction of the outback locals. To be fair, I used to go on like on the heathens. gore websites and shit. I was weird. Since the film was completely but, despised by audiences know, in weird. both markets it released in, almost it's every copy and print Curiosity vanished. kills the cat, right? And the film's distributor, Group W, released in, almost Ooh, every copy I would copy play a spooky game, vanished. but I also and probably like scream like Group a little girl. W went bankrupt leading to several of the master negatives to disappear as well. 
with the original versions of the film disappearing, the only way to watch it in any form for decades was through a heavily censored version on rare TV airings, or on incredibly obscure VHS releases. A version was discovered in Dublin, Ireland in the early 90s, but it was so heavily damaged that it was beyond restoration. It truly seemed like this film was completely lost to time, and it sounded like nobody would truly care if it went missing. That is, except for the original sure. editor yeah, of the we film, will. Anthony Buckley, who refused to let it go. He began his quest for the film in 1994, searching far and wide for an uncut, high-quality print of the original film. And it wasn't until eight years later, in 2002, that his search finally paid off. Nice. After traveling to Pittsburgh, Buckley amazingly discovered the original negatives in a warehouse stashed away inside a shipping container marked for destruction. Oh, and they just He later learned that had he not found those negatives, they would have been destroyed one week later. Oh shit. With the original negatives in hand, the restoration process could finally begin. How did they not and get destroyed seven already? Years later, the fully restored film was finally finished and premiered at the 2009 Sydney Film Festival a film, huh? to pretty good reviews. It's hard to say whether or not the reviews were simply for the amazing restoration effort or for the film itself, because at its screening at the Keynes Film Festival in 2009, many audience members walked out in disgust at the scenes of kangaroos getting shot. Huh? Wake and Fright may not have been a film anybody really wanted or was fond of, but it was thankfully found. Moments before destruction. Crazy, bro. Was there another one? The Passion of Joan of Arc. Found in a mental hospital. Nice. Up until now, none of these entries have had much easiness behind them. They've mostly been curious, confusing, or enticing mysteries. But the Passion of Joan of Arc is different. You want a book? This silent French film like from 1928 oh, by film. Carl Theodore Dreher was an incredibly innovative and influential film for the time it came out, featuring new camera shots and angles that have become standard today, like the close-up. The, the close film made a huge impact on cinema, and is to this day considered one of the most impressive and powerful films ever made, especially this with the portrayal cool. of Joan of Arc herself, played by René Jeannie Falconetti. Despite being so highly regarded and influential, the film came under fire for its harsh portrayal of the British church. As a result of this, many theaters refused to show it, and as such, very few copies were printed. Due to its silver nitrate composition, many copies burned up during various studio fires over the years, and the last known copy was thought to have been destroyed during a lab fire in 451. While the master copy had been burned away, a 61 minute version was able to be spliced together using spare footage and alternate takes. Although That's this version was not shot. looked upon highly and was really only used for educational purposes. Sadly, Carl Theodore Dreyer passed away in 1968, believing that his film would forever be lost. However, the story begins to take a mysterious turn in 1981, where a 35 millimeter prints of the film was found in perfect condition in the storage closet of a mental hospital. Were they showing it to After like, the film was discovered, I don't know. it was sent away to the Norwegian Film Institute, where it was put in storage yet again. Three years later, in 1984, it was finally determined that the print included the original cut of the film, and given its pristine condition, only required about one year of restoration to be brought to snuff. Why does restoration take so long? After its restoration in 1985, the film was released on home video and has been widely available since. But even after all this time, the question still remains. How and why did the film end up in a storage room of a mental hospital? There's no explanation, no answer, nothing. And it seems as though we may never get an answer. Damn. Mickey Mouse in Vietnam. Wait, what? Disney. Was the last one? Um. Oh wait. What the fuck? I thought this was a different Disney film. There's like a horror Mickey film and, a, and an amusement park. Are no stranger to bootleg or satirical cartoons. 
everybody knows who Mickey Mouse is. So I using do. him to get a message across, be it political, critical, or downright disturbing, is an easy way to get yourself noticed. Just look at Escape from Tomorrow or That's Suicide what I was talking about. EBI. Escape from Tomorrow, I really want to watch it. However, once Disney's lawyers catch even a whiff of these films, you can expect them to disappear fast. Except While Escape never from proven, Tomorrow didn't. Many people believe that's the case with the 1968 film Mickey Mouse in Vietnam. Created Sounds like a banger, I won't Savage, lie. Who's actually the father of Adam Savage from Mythbusters, and Milton Glaser, creator of the iconic I Love New York logo. The film is actually titled Short Subject, but is often referred to as just Mickey Mouse in Vietnam. That's not a and was made Stop. in process like of the ongoing war in Vietnam. Clocking in at just Trying over a minute, it. the short stars oh, Mickey Mouse and his classic appearance after he was recruited to join the army and is sent to the war-torn country of Vietnam. Aw, oh, shit. Upon arriving, Mickey is abruptly shot and falls to the what? ground with blood spilling out of his head. What the, the film fuck? ends there. What a banger! After the film was finished, <laughs> Savage and Glazier shared it exclusively with their friends and associates, along with the occasional film festival screening, but that was rare. As mentioned earlier, many assume that due to the political overtones, violent imagery, and use of their flagship icon, the film was taken down by Disney themselves. But what the fuck? this has actually never been proven. And given I'm the lack pickles, of tangible like pickles. evidence, it can Mickey be generally Mouse assumed that this is false. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. However, unknown as Come the reason inside, for its disappearance may be, inside. the film nevertheless faded away for about Mickey 40 Mouse years until 2010, where it randomly reappeared at the Sarajevo Film Festival. In addition to this copy, it was also discovered that the filmmaker's coop in New York City held a copy in a 38-minute compilation of other short films. This compilation was available to rent, but only for organizations and film festivals, he did get shot thus the making apps. it hard to actually be viewed by anybody. But then, suddenly, in April of 2013, a YouTube user by the name of A Bad Higgins discovered and uploaded the original version of Short Subject to YouTube. The short was missing its original soundtrack, Obviously, Vietnam. but Abad Higgins took it upon himself to add System of a Down's Soldier Side intro on top of it. When asked about where he found it, Abad Higgins stated that he found it in a bin of scrapped films at college and saved it from being destroyed. It was just sitting in there. How it got there and why is completely unknown. Thanks to the fear of the omnipresent eye of Disney, Abad Higgins deleted his original upload, fearing copyright related trouble. Thankfully, multiple mirrors had been saved and uploaded to avoid it becoming lost media again. Five years later, on July 31st, 2018, a YouTuber named CDCB2 discovered a VHS copy of the original shorts and uploaded nice. it onto his channel, which contained the original soundtrack, as well as the missing title and ending cards. And What's thus, sense? the search for the complete version of Short Subject, or Mickey Mouse in Vietnam, had been found. Fuck, after the stream, I'm just gonna Despite watch a rumors bunch and the of more assumption Las Vegas that this shit. is totally a thing they I'm would so do. Into it, lately. it would seem that Disney was not officially involved in suppressing the film. It faded away naturally, and the only reason why Abad Higgins deleted his original upload was out of fear over what Disney might do. It remains to this for not day shooting back. how the film got in that scrap bin. How was it made, and anyways? We'll probably never know why. Stop showing me that! That's so fucking weird looking. Ugh. I think that's it. Yeah, pretty much done. What a banger, bro. W.